Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You are all welcome to my channel, Apostle Paul Taiwo YouTube channel. To my recent subscribers I want to say a very big thank you, and to those that have been here all along, God bless you. And if this is your first time on this channel, I want to say a very big welcome and thank you for tuning into my video today. Kindly endeavor to click the subscription button and also the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I dropped a new video or come up for prayers. Have you heard of our church building project? We will like to use this opportunity to ask for your financial support for the ministry. We are raising a building for the church ministry and this involve lots of fund. In case God has put it in your heart to support the ministry church building project, kindly reach out to us on our contact details which is on the video description, and you can also send directly to the account details on the screen. We will be glad and grateful to receive your financial support for the work of God. For God loves a cheerful giver, thank you. This video you are about to listen to I believe will bless your heart, and help you to come into repentance, and also strengthen your bond with God and with His Holy Spirit in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Endeavor to like this video, share it to all your friends, contacts and loved ones, God bless you. Islamic Court Judge Releases Pastor After Several Dreams About Jesus August 7, 2019 The judge of an Islamic court, who had sentenced a pastor to death for renouncing Islam, changed his position after several dreams, with Jesus Christ. The pastor, married with two children aged four and six, worked tirelessly to strengthen the underground church in a very restrictive Middle Eastern country. The pastor was arrested in a raid by Islamic religious police who, after beating him, took him to an Islamic court, according to the Bibles for Mideast Ministry. According to the Muslim Sharia law, abandoning Islam is an act of blasphemy and deserves the death penalty. When the judge asked him why he left Islam to become a Christian pastor, he replied, I was a sinner and had several problems. I also had a serious illness and was dying. But the Lord Jesus Christ saved my life. The court ordered the pastor to be jailed for 15 days. If he returned to Islam, he would be imprisoned for two years and would then be assigned to serve the religious authorities in their struggle against Christianity. If he did not renounce Christianity, he would be beheaded at the end of the 15 days. The pastor rejected the offer and was sent to jail awaiting execution. The court judge had lost his eldest son at age 21 to cancer. His second son had just received a similar diagnosis. A week after the pastor's conviction, the judge was awakened in the middle of the night by a voice telling him, release the pastor from the prison and ask him to pray that your son will be healed. He didn't like what he heard, and preferred to ignore this voice. The next day, his son's health deteriorated further. This second night, the judge dreamed this time, of a light that was directed towards him. The words seemed to flow from the light as he approached, free my servant from prison and ask him to pray for your son. With his prayers, your son can be healed. On the third night, he had a dream which made the experience clearer. I am Jesus, the Son of the Most High, the man in white proclaimed in the dream. I died on the cross and now I live forever. You pursue my servant in vain. Free him from prison and your son will be healed by his prayers. The judge stood up when he heard his son screaming in pain. Running to the bedroom, he saw his wife and other daughters standing and crying by the bed. He told them his dream and at the same time, his wife and daughters begged him to release the pastor and ask him to heal. When prison officials received the judge's unexpected order, they immediately released the pastor, who went to the magistrate's home. He was taken to the young man's room and began to explain the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. After hearing the gospel, the sick young man gave his life to Christ and his family followed. The boy jumped out of bed and began to dance, thanking Jesus for his healing. For the next three days, the pastor stayed in the magistrate's house, praying, fasting, teaching the Bible, and preparing the new believers for baptism. On the fourth day, the whole family was baptized. How God protected 50 Christians by a sandstorm. A massive sandstorm protected a group of newly baptized Christians as Islamist militants pursued them, according to the Bibles for Mideast Organization. About 50 Christians in the Middle East, returning from a baptismal service, 
are said to have witnessed divine protection from the Lord Jesus Christ as a sandstorm arose, protecting them from a group of extremist Islamists who were chasing them by shooting them. About 50 people, including baptism candidates, editors note, 24 former Islamists, attended the service. After the baptismal and prayer service, we all took the same bus back to our house church to participate in the Lord's worship and sacrament. The bus was moving when suddenly, three cars, or more, of militants arrived behind us and they started shooting at us with guns, testifies Rizwan, a newly baptized. While the baptismal service had been kept secret, Bibles for Mideast volunteers cannot explain how Islamist activists learned of it. A witness continues the story of their adventure, really, we didn't know what to do, so we began to pray to the Lord for his divine protection. The young driver was driving the bus faster and faster and the activists were following us at the same speed. Some thought we were all going to die there. Suddenly we saw a giant sandstorm forming behind our bus. At first, we were all afraid of seeing the sandstorm. But, praise the Lord, we all felt that the Lord Jesus Christ was in the storm. Jesus saved us. He himself blocked the route of the militants in the form of a sandstorm. We heard gunshots again but never saw the vehicles chasing us again. Once again, we praise and thank our Lord Jesus Christ for showing his love and concern for his people. Thank you and praise to the Lord. Let us thank the Lord for his divine protection over us his children, wherever we are in the world and whatever difficulties we go through, God is alive. He watches over us. It's the truth. In difficulty, he listens to us and comes to our aid if we ask him for deliverance. The Bible is full of promises in this direction. Isaiah 41 10 Fear you not, for I am with you, be not dismayed, for I am your God, I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you, yes, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Philippians 4 6 Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. Hebrews 13 5 Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Psalms 121 1 I will lift up my eyes to the hills, from where comes my help. 2 My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. 3 He will not suffer your foot to be moved, he that keeps you will not slumber. 4 Behold, he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. 5 The Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade on your right hand. 6 The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. 7 The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, he shall preserve your soul. 8 The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, and even forevermore. The Lord Jesus appeared to the extremists in the sandstorm. A Muslim extremist who converted to Christianity tells how Jesus appeared to him, as well as the other militants with him, in the dust storm. He had decided, with the other Islamists, to kill all the Christians who had come to a baptismal service but God changed their plan. Harun, name changed for security reasons, gave his testimony to Bibles for Mideast, an underground organization that works to spread the gospel in the Middle East. Born into an important Muslim family in the Middle East, Harun was raised by a father who, as one of the country's leading religious authorities, was responsible for upholding Sharia law. He explains how, as a trained and sharpshooter, he commanded a militant wing to protect religion and conduct immediate operations against its enemies. Having had the information a few weeks ago that a group of Christians would meet for a baptismal service in the Arabian Sea, he formed a team of 19 activists to go to the site of the ceremony for the purpose of killing all Christians in the sea while in service. He explains how, being an Islamist militant, he wanted to create an electric shock so that the world will wake up to the news of the murder, and that Christians would fear the Muslims and stop evangelizing them in their region. By the time they got to the seashore, however, the group of Christians was already leaving by bus. The militants then pursued them by shooting the vehicle repeatedly. In a few seconds, however, a giant sandstorm formed in front of the vehicles of the extremists who could no longer advance. They then got out of the cars continuing to shoot through the dust storm. Suddenly they saw Jesus appear in the storm, as Harun explains, suddenly we saw Jesus Christ appear in the sandstorm. He was angry and his eyes were like a blazing fire. And with a powerful voice, he said to us, 
Why are you persecuting me? It will be difficult for you to fight against the goads. Oh, it was a terrible experience. His voice produced a very strong wind and we all fell on the road. Our cannons were flying away from us. Without knowing how, we got up from the road, but we could not speak. We had lost our voices. Jesus added, I came into the world, not to destroy you, but to save you. Go in peace. Harun explains, as Jesus disappeared in the dust storm as well, he and the militants with him experienced terrible fear and a great peace at the same time. He says he has never had such an experience in his life before. Then Harun and the others regained their voices and began to praise and thank God, except two of them, who remained in disbelief. Upon arriving home, Harun shared his experience with his father. This one warned him not to talk about it. After this incident, their militant activities were abandoned. The miracles do not end there, since, following a bite of a poisonous snake, Harija, Harun's sister who was dying would be healed by Jesus under extraordinary circumstances. And here's how. After the sandstorm, for Harun, and a dream, for Harija, the brother and sister asked God to reveal themselves to them. Then a Christian pastor was told in a dream to visit Harija in the hospital. He went there and declared to Harun, Harun, as by a dust storm, the Lord Jesus saved me and my group of your arms after the baptismal service at the sea, he also came to us as a wonderful mighty man showing his beautiful and protective hands with a sweet smile. I was among the people leading the group to be baptized. After saying this, Pastor Paul then invited Harun and his sister to believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Harun further relates that he understood that the Lord Jesus Christ had appeared before his own people as a mighty protector with a gentle smile but also like a blazing fire towards his persecutors. With his sister, he confessed his sins and accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Pastor Paul then prayed with them and his sister was totally healed. Harun's father, already touched in his mind when his son told him about the dust storm experience, also made the decision to believe in Jesus, after Harija was healed. All of his family members, as well as the 17 activists, also accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus for saving them. Amen. Grace be with you all that have Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. Amen. Bye for now. Hello everyone, thank you for watching our video for today. I trust it blesses your heart. Endeavor to give a like to this video and share it to all your contact and loved ones. I pray the grace of the living God will continue to rest upon you and upon everything that pertains to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have any question or comments kindly drop them in the comments section, God bless you. See you in our next video and have a lovely day, bye for now.